Hello, precious friend, Thomas Manton IV. The Lord has been talking to me today about this again, about the power of an exquisite habitation and a productive environment. The power of an exquisite habitation and productive environment. I'm amazed at how many principles there are in getting that. And today I want to focus on, I'm in volume two now, I want to focus on uh, a couple of things here. Hello all you that are coming on, God bless you. Share this with everybody and uh, you're going to see the power of God move in other people's lives as well as your own. But you first, yes? What you become on the inside will become real on the outside. And today I want to talk about several things in that. Two very clear, and I'm going to be reading from uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 1 and 2. Oh my God, this is so brilliant. And this is how God thinks about us. Forget about the part between the man and the woman, which we also equate that too, but uh, this is how God thinks about us. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 16, into the second chapter, a few verses down. I'm going to bring out a few points, so get ready for that right here from the, the book. Greatest leadership book ever is right here. Greatest love book ever written is right here, the Holy Bible. And uh, there's so much there uh, to talk about and to teach from. Now, wow. Two things, and it's, they're a bit heavy. Number one, you need to discern who's in your world. You want to have an exquisite habitation, an exquisite environment, a productive environment. For the purpose of God, you need to know who's in your world. Who are you with? Who's with you? What you're doing, who are you with? You know, Who are you with? What are you doing? Where are you? So who, what, and where? Where are you? Who are you with, and what are you doing? And why? And when, I call those the five W's of wisdom. Wisdom is the master W. If I can make a W with my fingers, let me not try to do all that. Wisdom, what, when, where, who, and why, where and when, and also how are you doing it. But the how is never as important as what you want to get done, you know. You decide what God has said. You discern and discover what God has said. You don't decide it. He decided it. But you discover it and discern it. And then you'll begin to be able to go after it. And your life will succeed. I heard this statement uh, uh, today. I heard this statement. If you want to be successful, you got to do what you love to do, number one. And then you need to do what you're absolutely good and talented at. And have those two intersect. And where they intersect, that's the sweet spot. That's the right intersection of work for you. What you love to do and what you're good at. You need to invest everything in that. And when you found those two, and you know what they both are, and you can inter they intersect together. Where they intersect, that's your life assignment. Sweet spot, so to speak. The sweet spot, you know, in the golf game. But uh, the, the place to launch from, the place to drive from, that's the intersection of life that you need to get at. So someone says, how can I become successful? Just by that. There, do what you love to do. Find out what you love to do. Know about it. And then what you're good at doing. And then you got to find the right environment, the right habitation, the right people. Hello. And then these things will begin to be possible. I'm just having a little epiphany right now in my spirit, in my vision, that I saw myself doing this today and speaking these words, and here I am. You know, this is my, my assignment. I love doing it, obviously, and I'm good at it, obviously, and they intersected together, and God ordained it all, and they flow, and they bless multitudes of people, so there you go. That's, that's a, a successful mission in motion. I wanted to say a couple of heavy things, but if you're going to ask God to expose everything wrong around you, you, you have to be strong and tough. 
because you might be shocked at who he shows is not right. It may be a really rude awakening that some decisions you'll have to make as far as, you know, moving on to your next season with who or how, where, what, and with who, you know, or not with who. So, but you need to do that. You need to ask God to expose every wrong thing. Father, do it. Let's lift our hands to the Lord. Some things are blocking your progress more than you know because of the wrong spirit involved in the equation of the habitation and the environment. And you have to uh, get everything cleaned and right. Hello. Expose, Father, anything that's wrong and remove everything that's wrong. Every wrong relationship, wrong connection, wrong decision I've made, wrong place, wrong people, wrong environment, wrong atmosphere, and make it the most beautiful one that I can get everything done. Let me tell you, people that succeed, it's not just an accident. They don't just succeed by accident. A lot of people are jealous of successful people. You don't know how hard they worked. You don't know how much they suffered and plowed the field. You don't know how much they sacrificed. You don't know how much they trained themselves. You don't know how many people they walked away from. You don't know how many people in situations they had to adjust and avoid and fix and all that to get, and the work that they had to do to develop themselves to get where they are. And then you see them shining, flowing, and go, oh, look at them. I wish I could be like that. Uh, but I don't know if you could pay the price. So there's a price tag to be paid, but you better pay it now for the next, before the next season. You better do it now. Hello, I'm talking to you. So the ultimate habitation is an exquisite, elegant, opulent, magnificent, brilliant, and beautiful habitation was what we saw here in Song of Solomon. And I'm just going to get to that in a second because I want to reiterate this point. Two things I want to focus on here in volume two. Two, two. Two, volume two, two things. Number one, that God discerns. I mean, that you discern uh, uh, the right and the wrong. So God can expose and remove everything that's blocking your way. That's number one. Everything that's hindering you from having great progress and great success. That God will expose it and remove it. Hello. Hello. Receive that. Pew. Number one, that's number one. Number two, uh, everything that you want to achieve and accomplish by doing that you'll get full flow into it from now in Jesus' name. Not next week, not next year, not next month, not next quarter. Now, let me tell you something. We're in the middle of the year, uh, just crossed over into the, the latter part of, of, of the year. But I want to tell you, the end of this year is going to be the greatest time of your life. It's happening for me. It'll happen for you. And I believe as, you, as we're connected together, you're connected in this pipeline of this anointing. God will begin to do these things for you like he's doing for me. Phenomenal things are happening for me, and I can't tell details. But I'll testify. And the thing, well, things will test, you know, experiences and realities will testify for themselves. How many know when you have a lot and you're really blessed, you really can't hide it? <laughs> you <laughs> Everybody will know it because they'll just look at your life and say, wow, look at that, look at that, look at that. Well, there it is. And the person, as myself or whoever, may not even have to say a thing. It's just, you just exhibit it by manifestation. And God wants that for you. Okay, oh, thank you, Lord. Let me throw in a third thing. Wow, 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 wow. I, I knew I was forgetting something. Let me do a third thing. And I'm not going to wait till volume three to do it. I'll give it to you now. I don't believe in doing tomorrow what I can do today. That's a, that's a, that's a diligence principle. You don't want to put off till tomorrow what you did today. Yesterday, I had, a, had an epiphany experience. Epiphany means a visitation from God, okay? A spiritual experience. An awakening could be a visitation, something powerful, something supernatural. I don't want to take time to explain that. Just look up the word and then do your own analysis of what you think it means. And what the definition of the word epiphany, E-P-H-I-P-H-A-N-Y, e epiphany. It's a spiritual experience. It's an awakening. It's something, you know, a revelation, something great that comes to you. Well, yesterday I had this experience that I prayed the whole day. Uh, and I think I was, I was doing some exercise and then I was in the shower. I took a really long shower really long, really long, really long, just stayed there. And it, it was just great because I was just an atmosphere that 
the steam was up and it was great. And I couldn't just, I couldn't think about anything. There was nothing else in the world that was going on. You understand? There was no appointments that I had. I wasn't going, I'm in route somewhere where I was looking at other things. It was just there in a closed room in that environment with the water flowing, which is symbolic also of the, you know, the river of the Holy Spirit, the, the river of God, you know, the water of the waterfalls of, <laughs> of God. I did a video uh, in, uh, Nakuru, Kenya, Lake Nakuru near there. It's a beautiful waterfall. I think it's called Thompson's Falls. T H O M P S O N. Thompson's Falls. Thompson Falls. And uh, someone said there were some lions laying down, you know, down the cleft of the rock a little bit. Well, and I didn't see them. Maybe they had moved, but pretty amazing. I mean, real live lions, you know, in the wild there, and these beautiful falls. And I did a video in front of it, and you could just see the torrent of the water flowing. And that was just a moment in time. What else would I be thinking about? But what I was speaking in, in the message and the falls in there, just that place. So it's, it's good that we have that time where we can just focus and pray. You understand? So here I was, and the Lord spoke to me and said, son, my son Thomas, my precious son Thomas, there's things that you want to see, that you need to see happen, that I'm in the process of doing, but it seems like uh, people, you know, are involved in the equation, and sometimes they don't move as fast as we'd like them to move in certain situations, right? So the Lord gave me the revelation again, of which I've had for a long time, of Isaiah 45, 11. He spoke to me, he said, concerning the works of my hands, you can command me. The tithe is another place where we can command the blessing. He says, prove, the Lord said, prove me now by your tithe and see that I'll open up the windows of heaven for you. I'll do it if you do that. So that's a place where we can take authority. John 15, 7. When you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you will and it will be done for you. Job 22, 28. Decree a thing and it will be established unto you. So I started to pray and I started to prophesy and I started to declare some things. Can I tell you the very next morning, that was Sunday afternoon, Sunday daytime, the very next morning, the beginning of the workday on Monday, even before the office, before office hours, earlier than that, a phone call came regarding a certain result of what I prayed about and declared. And it's very, very magnanimous. Smile, smile, smile. I'm smiling. You can smile too with me. And I thought, I knew, I knew by faith this was going to happen. You, you, you hear, and it's happened. It's happening. It's, it's, it's done. Listen, it, thank you, Father, for this blessing. My God! And it's such an awesome thing. Oh, I can't even describe it to you. But anyway, the, uh, it's big. It's big. It's big. It's really big. It's, I mean, it's, it's magnanimous. So now, you, you hear people talk about faith, right? About using their faith. Well, how do you do it? Well, that's why I did it there. A life of faith is exercising faith, trusting God, number one. I had a teaching online about this yesterday called, uh, I think it was in, in a leader, Radical Leadership, Volume 3, a series I was doing. But I really got in, it was really some prophetic decrees. So I don't know if I'm going to change the title of that, but I want to make a newsletter out of that. Seven things of upgrades that the Lord said, I'm giving, and they're all prophetic. And a lot of them are tied to faith, trust, to trust God, but also to speak. And when you don't see the result because you're just leaning on it on somebody else or life or situations or the way the things flow, it may not be on your, to your liking of the schedule you'd like to see it happening on. Hello. Hello, hi. So you got to take the bull by the horns. I said, I'm, I'm done. I'm done with this. I'm done. It has to happen. It is going to happen now in Jesus' name. I believe I receive it. It is done. Here's the scripture for that. Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Whatever things you believe, you, whatever things you uh, desire, what things you desire to have, the things you desire to have when you pray, you must believe you receive them. In other words, after praying, you have received them. They are, it's done. It is done. And then you shall have them. It's clear as a bell. And this is part of the, the life of faith, the use of faith. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, 
the evidence of things not seen, the Dr. TM4 uh, uh, embellishment on the, the, the verse there, and I'm not adding or taking away from it, but explaining it by this word, yet. You haven't seen them yet, but the whole purpose of you praying and b believing to receive them is that you will have them. And you don't have them yet, but they are happening as you declare by faith and claim them by faith. So those three things. Number one, God, let God discern and expose. Let, 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 let God show you and let him remove, expose and remove every wrong person out of your world. Every wrong situation, every wrong setup, every wrong arrangement, every wrong environment, atmosphere. Let it be broken. Number two, the thing that you're good at, that you love to do, that you'll get full flow into doing it. And number three, that as you decree a thing, it will be established unto you. And, and as you are doing this, my precious friend, you're going to see the manifestation of an exquisite habitation for you, a productive environment, a productive atmosphere for you to work in. And this is the, these are the keys to success. Now, lovely passage of scripture. Song of Solomon 1, verse 8, 16. Beloved, you are handsome, my beloved. Yes, pleasant. Beloved, you are handsome. Beloved, you are handsome. Beloved, you are handsome. My beloved. Yes, pleasant you are. Also, our bed is green. Were they in the grass outside? No, I hope not. Oh, it's green color. <laughs> I like certain color green, but you wouldn't want it to be in the grass. Our bed is green. We'll figure out what that means someday. Verse 17, Song of Solomon, right after Proverbs and Ecclesiastes and Song of Solomon, this little book. Chapter 1, verse 17, the beams of our houses are cedar. Houses, not just one house. I claim several houses. I have several houses, several houses, several properties, not just one, not just two, but more. The beams of our houses are cedar and our rafters are of fir, F-I-R, some beautiful wood. Watch this now. Chapter two, I am the rose of Sharon, oh, and the lily of the valleys. This is the Lord talking himself. So you could say, well, this is a chapter, a, a book between a man and a woman. Wonderful. It's great to, uh, it, there's a lot in there for that. But this is the L Rose of Sharon. Who is that? Who's the Rose of Sharon? There's only one. It's Jesus himself. I am the Rose of Sharon and the Lily of the Valleys. And like a lily among thorns, so is my love amongst you. Talked about daughters, but hey, I'm a son. So, the thing about this book is the promises of God. You see these thumbprints here of all the books? These are all the different books. And uh, promises are for me. It's not uh, male or female, son or daughter. It's for everybody. It's for all of us. They're universal principles. So, from the big boss, <clears throat> hallelujah. Say hallelujah, somebody. Say the promises for me. Like a lily amongst thorns, so is my love amongst you, says the rose of Sharon in the lily of the valley. Like an apple tree among the trees of the woods, so is my beloved among the sons. I'm his beloved amongst the sons. Me. This is habitation now, so you got to get this in your spirit. Now, let, let, me, let me prove a point. Have you ever had contentious people around you? Have you ever had, these are people that need to go. Have you ever had people that didn't love you enough? They just cared for themselves and that's the only reason they're with you? Of course you have. Have I? Of course. Have you ever had uh, people that uh, are self-serving? They don't really care much, you know? Now you can't make anybody love you. You can't make anybody celebrate you, but you do have to find the people that do. That's part of your work. It's part of your faith life, part of your faith process, part of your action plan. 
So, uh, this is the habitation here of all love, all bliss, all pleasure, handsome, lovely, favored, the apple of my eye, beautiful houses. Are you seeing this? Read this. Song of Solomon 1 and 2. It says, I, so is my beloved amongst the sons. Well, that's me. And I trust you claim that it's you also, or daughter if you're a lady. Let's talk to her about the daughter. So is my love amongst the daughters, daughters and sons. So there you are. Locate yourself here. Like an apple tree among the trees of the woods, so is my beloved among the sons, amongst the sons. I sat down in his shade with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. Ooh, Lord, that's nice. He brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. The banquet house. That's the habitation place. That's the beauty of how God thinks about us and how he wants us to be connected up with him. That's the environment we're supposed to be in. Are you seeing that? So anything else has to hit the road, Jack. Anything else has to hit the highway. My way or the highway, the Lord said. I say that as God's servant, as God's prophet, to the nations, my way or the highway. When I started to pray yesterday about some things, they're, they're coming into place. Some really great things, I'm telling you. And there are things that took time. Very involved. Very involved. A lot of pain, a lot of anguish, a lot of work, a lot of toil, a lot of long time coming. A lot of stress, a lot of, you know... To get a lot of work, a lot of diligence, a lot of action, a lot of passion, a lot of things to get to get things done. But then, you know, when you see something is not, you know, clicking, there's several things wrong. You're not enough in your assignment. You have the wrong environment. You, you, you know, have to see some things change around. But also you need to exercise by faith the violent posture of taking it by force. And that is the word of the Lord. I could embellish so much on this and stay on here long and talk so many other, speak so many other things. And, but I just want to give the concentrated word. Now you take that and run with it, everything that I said. This will also be transcribed and point by point. This will come out in a newsletter. It could be a chapter in one of our great books coming up but uh, on this same subject. But it'll definitely be in at least an e-newsletter that you can get. And also have the e-books that we, we will be sending to our partners, those that have sown into this anointing. Uh, uh, we're going to be sending these to you. You can tell me which one you want, but I may surprise you with an extra. And they're going to be coming to you in Jesus' name. Great things are happening. Great things are on the horizon. I don't want to take time to make announcements right now. I just wanted to bring that word. But those three things you need to happen for God to expose and remove everything and everyone that's wrong. You need to get full flow into the work that God's ordained you to do. And you need to have an excellent habitation, an environment of product productivity. And to do this, you need to decree some things prophetically and speak what you want and say it by the Holy Ghost and command things to happen that people won't be able to rest until they bless you. Hello. They won't be able to stop until they've achieved what God has commissioned uh, the, res the, the, the result that God has commissioned for you that someone else is involved in, they need to be on it until you get it and it is absolutely done and manifested. They may not even know that the hand of God is upon them to do something great for you, but that's where your faith comes in. You need to exercise your faith. Rise up, Matthew eleven twelve, and take it by force in Jesus' name. I pronounce these blessings upon you. And I am Thomas Manton IV. Thank you for partnering with the ministry. The information will be in the heading and in the comments of how you can sow into this work. It's the beginning of a new month now. Many of, many of you, it's the right time to sow, to tithe, to give a special seed and a special offering to the world mission that we're doing. The world mission of Thomas Manton IV. I celebrate your season, your partnership. 
God bless you, and I look forward to talking to you right here on the next broadcast. In Jesus' mighty name, the Lord bless you richly. Amen.